Uh, we'll look at the same map. Oh, shut up. Uh, so, so it's the same map from the question 51, even though question 58, 58 doesn't make a direct reference to that. But it's the same map. So it's a map which takes polynomials of degree 3 into polynomials of degree 4. And if you give a name to the action of T on P, that's the connection between the maps. Between the polynomials, I'm sorry. This time, this time, the question says now we know it is a linear map. We know it's correctly defined. The question says now let's just choose a basis. Uh, basis F, uh, that's the name to the basis in, in here. Uh, and the actual polynomials here, F0, F1, F2, F3, they are simply <coughs> monomials. So it's a one single power of X. You see my J here changes from 0 to 1, uh, with 0, 1, 2, 3. So it's a basic monomials. We know it is a basis in P3. In fact, I should, so it should say it's a standard basis in P3. Now, in P4, I'll fix another basis, which I will call C, which will consist of five functions, because dimension of P4 is 5, G0, G1, uh, G4. So I skip two functions. I just hit them by these dots, two of them. That's another basis, this time in P4. And Gs are also monomials. Again, you see, I'm, I'm paying so much details to, to the correct presentation. Even though Gs and Fs, most of them are identical polynomials, I use different names for them because as vectors, they live in different vector spaces. F monomials, they live in P3. G monomials, they live in P4. Strictly speaking, two different vectors. That's why you have to distinguish names. My experience tells me, actually, with, the, with, with this class this year, that giving names to things is something you have sometimes difficulties with. You, don't, you, shouldn't, be, you shouldn't be so much hesitant when you, when you need extra names. You need extra names, you introduce extra names. So this time, we have five monomials like this. The question says, find the matrix of the map with respect to these two bases. Anyway. When we find the matrix, we just follow the, we follow the same uh, set of uh, steps. Uh, first, we compute, the, we compute my map on every element of the basis in the domain, so on every element in here. Given the nature of my map, I have to follow this routine when I compute the values of my map. So what the routine says? The value of my, of my map on the fj, I'm going to do it in the, in the j language, so without individual f0, f1, f2. It will save some time and space. So the value of my t on the polynomial f sub j, it will be some new polynomial, and I give name to this polynomial, you see, h sub j. What's the connection between h sub j and the f sub j? That's the connection. Here I, here I spell out this connection. h sub j of x is the integral of this type. Now the actual computation comes. I compute this integral because fj is a monomial. Here it is. I compute the integral of the monomial, tj dt. We all know how to compute the, I mean, we all know the antiderivative of this tj. It is like this. It is tj plus 1 by divided by j plus 1 with a double substitution 0x. This time, you see, I made the complete presentation. If you make a double substitution, 0 makes it 0, x makes it x. So here's the result. This one, it's a monomial. And because this is supposed to be in this vector space, I will use a G, G name for this monomial. The result is this. G sub J plus 1 of x by J plus 1. And that is true for every J from 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So now I come back here, what I say, this name, this name I introduced for the value of my t on fj, it is actually this polynomial. You see, I'm dropping x now from the present day, because x not supposed to be in this line. I mean, x in brackets. For every j from 1 to 0, 1, 2, 3. And now I'm ready to build the matrix, because remember, the, the, when you look for the matrix of the linear map, what do you do? <clears throat> you apply your linear map to every element of the basis in the domain. Here's a result. And then you represent the result as a linear combination of the elements 
of the basis in the codomain. It is already presented in that form. It's a linear combination of the elements in the codomain. And the coefficients which you observe here in every line, I, we have, that's, that's how many lines we have here, four lines. The coefficients you observe here, that will be the columns of my matrix. So here's my matrix. I will open the complete matrix and I'll comment on that. It's a matrix which basically filled with zeros everywhere except on first sub diagonal. You see, it's a diagonal, it's a diagonal position, but it's just like one level down from the main diagonal. So why not to call it first sub diagonal, which is filled with the numbers one, one, one half, one third, and one fourth. Remember, this column, this column, why did I write this column? It's the uh, set of coefficients from the first line in this representation. First line when j is equal not. When j equal not, it will be coefficient 1 next to g1, which is the second element here, and next to every other element here, there will be zero coefficients. That's why we have zero. First, 1, which is a coefficient next to g1, and is zero in the rest of the position. Second column, second column, it's the coefficients taken from the second line here, line which corresponds to j equal 1. When j equal 1, here will be 1 half, and here will be g2. g2 is a third element here, which carries the coefficient 1 half. The rest of the key elements carries the coefficient 0. That's why 0 is here, 0 is here, and 1 half here. The same logic goes for this column, and the same logic goes for this column. And that's my matrix. We found the matrix. That, that's not the complete question. Now the question goes to ask what will be the rank and the nullity of this map. So remember the rank is a number of linearly independent columns or number of leading columns. And the nullity is the solution. Uh, it's, well, it's the dimension of the null space. If you'd like to identify the uh, rank, uh, and nullity, you have to take this matrix to the row echelon form. For this particular matrix, it's not it's, it's, it's a very easy task. Basically, you have to just take the zero row down, and you have to normalize every coefficient here. Here's my row echelon form. Reduced row echelon form, as a matter of fact. What can I see from here? That every column here is the leading one. So every element of my C basis which correspond to, to the columns here. And when I mean that, when I say correspond to the basis here, it means that I take the elements of this column, I put them as a coefficients next to the basis polynomials here, the result is the polynomial which correspond to the column. So the first column corresponds to the polynomial G1, in fact. Second, co second column corresponds to the polynomial 1 half of G2. So the basis of my image of t is this set. g1 is a polynomial which corresponds to the first column. One half of g2 is a polynomial which corresponds to the second column here. Right? Because I take this coefficients next to my elements of the basis. The only one which will, will, left, will leave, is, uh, will stay, sorry, will be one, one half g2, one third of g3, and one four of g4. That's the basis of the image. That's why the rank is 4, dimension. We can conclude now the nullity, because the question asks for the nullity of this map, by the, by the way, by rank and nullity theorem, by the way, because we know rank of the map plus the nullity of the map always deliver the dimension of the dom uh, domain. Dimension of the domain is 4, so the nullity must be 0. But on the other hand, you can, you can also see this by the fact that every column here is a leading column. That's why we don't have any null space. The null space of T is zero subspace as well. And the basis in the zero subspace is the empty set. Empty set.